first thing, bro, want to say happy birthday to you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> this young your birthday man again. Month. <laughs> yeah, getting younger by the year. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's all in the heart. It's all in the heart. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, man. Were you able to celebrate in this situation, this COVID situation? I know it's a little bit different, but. Yeah, you know, I really wasn't expecting to do nothing big. One, for most of my life, it always rained. So I got a right. couple times, I got to sneak in some birthdays. But I was like, you know what? The forecast just looked like it's going to rain. So, you know, just had enjoyed some tacos. And my homeboys had a little late night party situation for me. So that was pretty entertaining and interesting. And, uh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just DJ. Well, I supported it in the event. I would tap a hand at, uh the Northern Neck Summer Jam. But we had to push that back to uh, Saturday, September the 12th coming up because of the you know, the flooding and, and, you know, the flash flooding, flooding out there as well. So, right, and of right, course, right. you know, that field we on be all wet. So it was just a whole lot. So that would have been my birthday weekend, but we're going to make up for, you know, probably this, probably tonight. Right. Probably the next two weeks with these, uh, you know, some things going on with the bar. We're going to open up. So we talk about all that though. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, man. You, during this time, you just got to persevere. Adjust, man. Make the adjustments. You know, it's strange, but, you know, it is what it is. So, you got to stay positive, like you were saying, man, and do what you got to do, man. Still your birthday. Made it another year. That's a blessing. So, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we're going to get right into it, bro. Uh, where did you grow up, Swerve De Niro? <laughs> I grew up in the city of Richmond. You know, I went to all my schooling from pre-K to uh, to college right here in the city of Richmond, you know, definitely, definitely went to the YMCA's and the, the, the city recreation, the parks, of course, everybody know me from going to the Boys and Girls Club in my heyday, so right. uh, pretty much my uh, my youth was spent there. I lived every side of town, even had, you know, time living in, you know, uh, Creighton Court, just with my pops and his family a little bit, so I got that experience and right. uh, being around uh, Bell Mead a lot, you know, right. around those times, just with my brother and you know, you know, just kicking it with him and his friends over there, having a good time. So, um, yeah, man, just just having that that balance, man. You know, if I had to say more, my hood was probably with that boys and girls club because that was like <laughs> that was the place that, that helped us, you know, get to where we at now, man. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I remember when we first met, man. You were going there, and that was a big part of your life, man. I, that's a big part of uh, Richmond, there, man. The boys and girls club, like you said, along with the YMCA. You either went to YMCA or Boys Club, you know what I'm saying? So those were get big, big parts of the city, man. So yeah, man, that that's good to go. What schools did you attend, bro? Oh man, of course, you know, I went to uh, John B. Kerr Elementary School. Okay. Uh, then for middle, of course, you know we went to Hugo High School. Shout out to the Falcons. Right. Um, and I went to I went to VCU. Those were my schools. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. man. Because I think what we met. And elementary school at the famous John B. Curry. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah man. Probably make it all the way, all the way up. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. We've been way. knowing each other for a while, for a while. So, yeah, man. So, I, I know you're talking about the boys' club and everything. What other activities did you involve yourself in, in, in as a child, man? As a teenager, uh, yeah. As a kid, I was seven years old. I think I, I might have been. Maybe a little older, maybe like eight or nine years old. I played a little soccer okay. for the city recreation in parks. Right. Um, tried a little baseball, but I didn't really have like no team situations, more like the rec center in the mural. But as far as like actually, like, you know, somebody might play midgets or peewee football, for me, that was just soccer, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, played the violin in fifth grade, kind of regret, stop playing it. And also, yeah. you know, I know it's not too late to get back to it, but, uh, you know, I wish I would have played the drums, but. You know, right. known for making the beats on the hand, so. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, so those are some of the key things, man. But other than that, like, you know, I'm just saying, going back to it, being in there with boys and girls play, you had an opportunity to get your first job for me when I was 13. Right. You know what I'm saying? Getting a chance to be a camp counselor, uh, um, you know, just doing fundraising events, getting a chance to travel. So, right. you know, being part of a little leadership group, you know what I'm saying, you call it the Keystone Club. Right. That joint had me meeting, meeting everybody, you know what I'm saying? Right. Even the, the dinners we had, so. Right. That place that open it up for like, you know, we're doing video stuff now. It started back then. I actually got them VHS tapes I need to convert. Right. You know, right, right, right. MP4 files. But, you know, just doing all them, them little hobbies. They, we play, we got to do everything. We got to play hockey. Right. You know what I'm saying? 
you're a hockey. You, you got a chance to do fencing, wrestling, right. skating, whatever it is you want to do to say, ah, that ain't my steez. Oh, I like it. Golf. We got exposed to golf. Right, right. So, you know, we just had a well-rounded, you know, list of things you could do. But by the time, you know, you hit that thir- by the time I hit that 13-year-old mark, it was just all about, you know what I'm saying, like trying to find and discover what I wanted to do and, right. um, you know, just end up doing DJing, of course, working with the youth, of course, uh, versus – the dream of playing basketball or trying to be a boxer. So right, right, right. Did you have like a favorite uh, subject in school that you kind of you like more than others? History. History. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. I call my pops though. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I pop, 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 pop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I know you mentioned you went to VCU, man. What year did you go to VCU? What did you major in? Uh, so I graduated class of 2003. Okay. Uh, man, my major was social work, then it was mass comm. Okay. And then I ended up just finalizing it with criminal justice. So it was a, a bunch of switches to the room, so it led to a, more time than a normal situation to go on. But, you know, right. uh, I even, you know, I even just fell out when I, I got back in because I had people doubting that I was going to go back to school. Right. So I cried when I fell out. So I'm like, no, I got to go back. I, I got to finish this degree and right. the course. Right. And right. And the course. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, 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 that's good, bro. Yeah, so um, I know you did some activities at VCU. Is there anything that stand out at VCU that you like doing? Ooh, oh yeah, WVCW <laughs> College Radio. That's okay. That place right there. So many nights were back in the days when you had to get calling cards to. Be able to call record labels and I should find love. I should find numbers, business cards. And then once I found this book called the CMJ, the College Music Journal, where you can start being a reporter and your name show and your radio station call letters and the number right. and all your songs, like independent artists, major artists. So and that, 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 man, you talking about instead of going to hang out in the commons and all that, I'm at the radio station. You know what I'm saying? We did right. coverage of everything from 9 11 to. We had a, a 24-hour, uh, we just called it a rockathon. But when we came in, we did our, uh, we called it Gin and Juice Show. So I my girl, you know what I'm saying? She knows she is Miss Okram, but of course she's married now. But, you know, back then, uh, you know, we was Gin and Juice on right. the radio. So that radio station is where I live, you know what I'm saying? Outside of going to this lawyer office reading uh, books about Donald Passman and other little things like that. Okay. Um, you know, going to the street rat right, and going to James Smith House and his wife fussing me about come get these records. So <laughs> all that all that radio station just created all of that. Okay. And other little junk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember coming up there, man, looking at you do your thing, man, working the boards and everything on the mic. Um, which later led on to a career. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, I remember you putting in that work, man, and, you know, doing parties, doing the radio station, promoting yourself on campus, man. So, yeah, I know I know it was yeah. – you were serious about it, man, when you were spending that, that amount of time in, in the radio station. So, yeah. Did, did you have, like, a mentor at VCU that kind of, like, helped you? Or you – you, how did that work? Did you kind of, like, pick it up on your own? Or how, how did that whole thing work? Well, on campus, not per se, but because of being able to, the opportunity they gave me to be on the radio station, um, you know, on campus, which wasn't really a big, it didn't have a huge signal. Uh, we kind of relied on the internet more so, and we got to do remotes. Right. So just uh, speaking to them, I would say some of the guys that were in there, you know, it was majority white guys, you know, and I was pretty much the only black guy in there with my homie, Ronnie Ray, when we okay. had our situations too. So he used to have a, you know, we used to have a show together or, do our thing on our own and all that, but uh, outside of that, I mean, I pretty much was in there like just trying to see how can I be a part of like reporting. That's probably the one thing they probably mentored me on. But the outside influences would come from like meeting people like James Smith, you know, saying my homie safe from Street Rat, uh, you know, DJ Foot telling me like, man, don't try to be a part of this. Go ahead, start your own little movement. Right. Uh, you know, in that time, in the college time, so. Janelle Ballard, she used to take me, you know, do promotion events, okay. promotional runs, putting up posters, you know, I did that stuff with, uh, with James Smith too, but, you know, Janelle should definitely take us to, like, events that might be in the 757 when me and Vaughn got to meet, like, Core Mega, for example, seeing AI, and right. we was like, wow, you know what I mean? Like, to really be around there, I'm getting to go to um, Wowie in um, 757 and be there with people that's on the air, you know what I'm saying, the Buddha Brothers, and then a couple, you know, record labels in there, like, Loud Records. 
Like, right. say, hey, you got this record. I'm like, I don't have it. They were like, man, here, take it, man. Just take it. They're looking out for you. So wow. I'm like, damn, like, just getting those people that co I connected with early right. and seeing people that I didn't know, you know what I'm saying, but I met through those connections, it was either a direct or indirect mentorship because I had something to aspire to. You know right, I mean? right, 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 right. So compared to now, man, we look at the DJ game that what you're <laughs> in, you're a veteran at this point, man. Um, how have things changed with the, 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 the DJ career, man? The, just like the equipment, just how you do parties and stuff, man. You know, you're having uh, these parties now where I'm saying you have a DJ, but everybody got on earphones. So it's, it's changing. How, yeah. how has things changed? Man? Well, this first go ahead, pick it back. Go ahead, pick it back all right there. You with some of the headphones on. So that's the, uh, the silent, um, you know, the silent party movement where you have, you know, at least probably like three DJs where you can go in there and put on their headphones. So you can listen to whatever that DJ is mixing or whatever channel they want to call it. It might be, Throwback hip hop, you might have a reggae dance hall, or you might have whatever. It might be a twerk mix, whatever them DJs decide to do when they come out there. So that's dope, and that goes back to basically the technology, man. Going from breaking your back current vinyl to right. man, just sitting in the computer and downloading, you know, MP3s from you know your email or your record pools, or you know, just people, you know, just sending you records regardless. So I would say for me, the biggest thing is technology, man. I mean, even me, I still got my Technique twelve hundreds, but. Okay. You know, having a DJ controller just because of, you know, situations with my shoulders and all that, it's just easy for me not to have to carry a bunch of records. And I was, like, resisting it. I was like, man, I got to do these. I got to start all over. Right. Like, and it really didn't because certain people would look out for you. Um, so, you know, in the beginning days, I would have to go to certain DJ's houses or, and being in the record pools. You got to get two copies of everything, two copies of a single because, you know, you're going back and forth with your flash game. Um, right. It just, you know two copies of the album, but now it's like, you save so much money. Them, them joints was expensive, them singles. Right. I remember paying five ninety nine, six ninety nine. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Going to D Street Records, we did the white labels, and they was like, could be anything, because you wanted the hottest freestyle, or, you know, you had to get it on that, on that vinyl from a B Street, or from a 12 inch, I think that's what it was called in, in, in DC. Right. Were, like two of the places, like, going to B Street, like a kid in the candy store with all that vinyl. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Now, you just simply get it. It's, everything's digital, you know what I'm saying? So wow. technology has changed the game, you know, and a lot of more people can become DJs, you know what I'm saying? And right. some people feel a certain kind of way about it, but if you can master the craft on the new technology, at least try, I say, at least try to touch the 12s or, you know, something that's similar with the new technology. They got these turntables that you ain't got to necessarily use the needle, and them joints is, the official, you know what I mean? So okay. technology changed the game. Okay. Now, do you, um, at your different events, do you ever go back to the techniques or anything and get that, that vintage equipment out? Or are you straight just head first with the, the new equipment now? You're not even worrying about that anymore. Well, my records are priceless. So, you know, they actually, I can't wait to get in my record room, but I shouldn't even be saying it, but they're still in the same order from the last time I played <laughs> them, John. So if I go to my main crates, not right. all the extra records, but like the main crazy I know I was taking for that particular night. Right. The same records us in the same place. So, you know, I just uh you know, right now just doing the, the straight digital. Some you know, some of my friends if, if I run into them and they got the you know the turntable, so let me just text these joints real quick. Right. You know, right. For me, the most part I've mastered the uh you know, I can say master, but I've definitely got to the point where I can be more comfortable with the digital versus being on the vinyl, which was a big change. Right, 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 right. Yeah, man, I can see that being a, a big change. And like you said, you were honest. You think other DJs had that same situation, kind of resisting going, embracing the new technology? Was that a talk within the community, you know? To be honest, I never really heard. It might, people might have said something about it, but I didn't hear about it, you know, from anybody's mouth in particular. But you will see those DJs who still – treasure the, the vinyl situation. So right, right, right. They'll never convert. You know what I'm saying? Right. Even if they got the digital, you know, they're going to have, you know, some people do vinyl parties where they just bring the vinyl out. So it might be the, the hottest DJ who got the technology, but he's like, you know what, we're going to bring the vinyl out. Even if they're using vinyl, what I mean by that, instead of using the Serato, for example, where, you know, it's pretty much a blank vinyl, you know what I mean, that right. matches up with the system. They right. actually will bring out the old school, bring out okay. the whole collection of vinyl, okay. no computer type stuff. You know what okay. I'm saying? Just straight the turntables of the mixer. You know what I'm <laughs> right. I got you. I got you.
Mm-hmm. So, kind of like going around, progressing our way up, man. When you graduated out of college, what was your first job, man? What did you end up doing? Well, I was, um at that point, I had been already employed at, at Radio 1. Okay. So I was doing Street Team, working for Hot 993, and then by the time I graduated, that June of 03, I started working at the Boys and Girls Club over in uh, Fulton. So I was pretty much doing both and been pretty much maintaining youth development and radio okay. for these last, you know, 18 years. So it's been, it's definitely been a journey, man. But it's been worth it because both of them balance each other out when it comes to, you know, I find how to say it in the business sense, like the attributes that they share. Right, you know, right, 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 right. They match each other, so yeah. I got you, I got you, I got you. So I know you're big with community service, man. What type of things in the community are you doing now? Have you done that? Why have you continued to do that, you know, throughout your career as a DJ? Well, let's still come back to the Boys and Girls Club, all the stuff that all those people did from the, the, the staff. Right. You know what I mean? We pretty much changed a lot of our lives a little bit. It was great. Right. Priceless role models to our lives. You know, it gave us the opportunity too, like I was saying earlier, being a junior staff or some people were like a CIT counselor training. So that was your taste of giving back. You might've been part of one of the leadership groups. That was your chance to give back. So that's still always, if that was always in your zone, you know, it was like, it's kind of hard to get that up. So right. uh, it took me a while. Like, I was going, I still was going back up to my, end of my, I think maybe about the middle or close to the end of my freshman year, I would kind of just go up there to see what was going on. Right. Because I was accustomed to going there from seven to 18 right. years old. You know what I'm yeah. So yeah. it was like pretty much, you know, jumping off the porch and pretty much like breaking free. Right. My junior, my, uh, my sophomore year, which I started getting into heaven to the, into the, um, into just the art and craft of DJ and trying to learn about it. But right. yeah, man, it's just, oh man, I, that, those were the beginnings to just being a part of you know, I don't even know, back to school nights. Right. Uh, 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 used to join the, um, I can go on reading the kids at the library. Right. You know what I'm saying? Being part of mentoring groups, advocating for mentoring on t- television. Right. Um, some of these were paid jobs, but sometimes, I mean, you do go the extra mile, you know, regardless of, if you, for me, it was my profession, but there's times when you go the extra mile because you big brothers, big whatever to some of the young people that you, that you work with, I want to say serve, but that you work with, that you partner with. Right. You know, because it's their lives, you know, we're not dictating them, but right. it's just, um, I don't know, man, just bringing superstars and celebrities around them just to kind of motivate them to want to do better because I had the same exposure. So different times, but, you know, kind of some of the same core values that was instilled in me and my chance to get back. I mean, I mean, I just, it's so much I can name, man, back to school drives. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, doing things with basketball and football teams as far as intramural leagues. Right. Uh, you know, do a fundraiser event. So now the the more of a position I can put myself in in, in power, if you want to say, or my connections grow right. or my network grows, I just continue the opportunity to say, hey, we can do this event. We can do that event. I've done rooftop fundraisers, you know what I'm saying, with uh, my partner, Anthony. We get raised funds for other nonprofits, you know, with the light bulb organization, I got you. which is a nonprofit that we have together. You know what I mean? So right. uh, my dream is to get this community center in Petersburg that okay. was in the works before COVID hit and everything. So right. you know, when things, you know, get back as close to normal as possible, right. that would be like the legacy out of all this stuff, DJing, this, that, and the third. It'd be like, yo, because I had Boys and Girls Club, my joint, our joint don't exist no more. You know, they uh, beautiful homes now, but oh, I wanted wow. to be able to take my kids or whatever. Like, that's what, that's the place to raise me. So now I just got to kind of point on the corner. So I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? Just kind of take that inspiration and cap off your career with, trying to open up a center, you know what I mean? Get okay. close to it or have a strong program in some centers, but right. center the legacy for all of this stuff. So, you know, this, this community, this, this community uh, giving back, you know, would never, uh, would never stop whether if it was, you know, if I was still employed or just doing it on my own, which I've done a lot of my own as well, right. outside of employment. Right. I got you. I got you. So as a DJ, man, what, what's one of the highlights of, of your DJ career, man, so far? What's, what's one of the things that kind of like stick out for you, man? Like, man, I can't believe I did this, I DJ this, I met this person. What's, what's one of those or a couple of those things that, that, that was a highlight so far, man? Oh, man, it's uh, the only two artists I've had a chance to DJ for was uh, – was Turk with the hot with the um, from the hot boys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cash money, so that was a good yeah. experience. Um, and then off the fly, I don't even know if I was even booked to DJ, but I ended up at this on the turntables when 
uh, one time Lil Webby came. So those that was just like crazy moments right there. Okay. Um, five highlights. Everything has been like a stepping stone for me. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, being a stone so artist, being around the people. For some reason, I'm just more so like, yo, this is like I can't even be on the radio. It wasn't even the plan. You know, it's okay. just every every opportunity I've had to work with somebody new. It's been the highlight, those interviews, you know, interviewing people like Rick Ross, Khalees, right. for example, you know what I'm saying? Uh, those those things are highlights, you know, getting to meet T-Pain. There's so many artists you can name. Right. Um, even back to WBCW, you know, got the chance to meet uh, Capadonna and some of the people from the Wu-Tang. In the oh, yeah. You know, that was like, that was crazy. It wasn't the whole Wu-Tang, but it was enough right. to enjoy. We had dinner with one of my homeboys. That's a whole other story. But just seeing him and all, like, damn, I did that. Like, I got him the chance to meet. A right. celebrity, so like, you know, meeting the Booty Brothers was crazy. You know, what I'm right. even getting on the radio with, um, just like people that I, I look up to, like Stress, Lonnie B. You know, getting right. to meet Mike Street. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just those were the highlights. And I got to meet DJ Drake. I mean, the Funk Brothers. I can go on and on. Right. You know what I mean? That's like Shawn cool. Michaels. You know what I mean? <laughs> Greg GB. Like I used to listen to these dudes. You know, Freddie Fox. You know what right. I mean? Right. There's so many, you know, you know, DJs I can name, man. And it's just been the highlight. There's just so many different highlights. Being able to pull off events. Right. Those are probably the biggest thing. Because for me in the beginning, nobody was booking me. So I just had to kind of jump off the porch and, right. you know, I was refunding and did what I had to do. Right. And um, just being able to do new events, try to work with somebody new. One new person every year. That's kind of always been my goal. And it's been, okay. it's been like that, you know, saying sometimes it'd be long term, you know, sometimes other people got other things they got they got going on. I could be busy myself. So, you know, we just kind of break away, then you see each other again. So it's still that mutual respect. Um, right. Right. But yeah. I got you. I got you. Man, you didn't let a lot of people, bro. I didn't even know that myself. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, man. You got so many pictures, man. Like, yo. Yeah. And then one of the newest highlights is being on ESPN radio. So that's like that just started last week. Okay. You know sure. So yeah, you gotta tell us about that as much as you can. I don't know how much you can tell us, but yeah, yeah speak on that, bro. I mean, right now, you know, just um definitely enjoying the the the, the dream, you know what I'm saying? Of like, oh my god, I got the phone call, like, yo, you wanna do ESPN? Wow. Like, yeah, that'll, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm pretty much, you know, just producing the show, um, the morning huddle, and that comes on, you know what I'm saying, during the weekdays, so getting a chance to uh, produce that. And I'm also producing the uh, this horse show as well, so that's kind of dope. So I'm not on every day, you know what I'm saying, doing it these times, you know, I got to flex it out with other stuff I got going on. But, um, man, it's priceless because it can lead to so much other stuff. You know, I was thinking about trying to get press passes and being able to go to some of these games and just watch the games or – Right. You know, man, I get a question in, but I can put my little record out like, you know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? What's that? You know what I'm saying? What Bradley Bill say? You know what I'm saying? Right. What John Wall say? You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. What right. Dwayne Haskins say? You know what I mean? And just be there. Right. Uh, and just to kind of get into that sports community. That's a, I mean, highlighting high school sports uh, for both genders. You know what I mean? Uh, right, right, right. Also, HBCU sports, like being able to cover those. Like the AAU circuit is big, you know. Right. I definitely like the people like Ball This Life and how they, get their coverage, you know what I'm saying? ESPN showed their high school athletics, but you know, it's a lot of like, you know, you know how we still have all the rap shows and all that now, you yeah. know, sports is big too, so. Exactly. You know, it's a, it's a lot of people that do these, that do awesome YouTube pages that I watch. Right. Just see how they bring their highlights or bring their stories or, you know, make you think about these different theories of sports, so. Right. Just to be into sports, you know, I love sports just as uh, much as I love music. Definitely music, but I say the music much more, but. Right. I'm addicted to sports, so it's a great honor just to be you know, being on ESPN and whatever happens from there, right. I'm just gonna enjoy the ride. That's congratulations, bro. That's a big move, man. You going like you said, meeting new people every year, man. That's a good thing to good goal to have, man. So you doing that once again this year. So yeah, bro. Yeah. That's that's good to go. That's good to go. Appreciate man. it. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So what else you got going on, man? What uh how do you see your career going from two twenty twenty twenty? And and on man, how how do you see it going? Do you have a a um, projection that you want to do? You see yourself doing this at this year, or are you kind of like taking it in stride? Man? You know, I, well, the motto has always been "Bad boys move in silence." You know, right? So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, so like with the restaurant, with Burger Bros. You know, one of our goals is definitely try to make that into a franchise. So we got to. Right. That's probably the only real plan I have as far as like a 
okay, we got we want to have two years or less to have our franchise package down pack. Signature right. this, drink signature that, you know, having that model together. Um, just exactly, you know, you know, ingredients for whatever type of sandwich that we're going to be fixing. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got vegans, vegan food too. So it's like, what's going to be the go. vegan menu? What's going to be the nighttime <laughs> menu? What's going to be this theme menu? So right. whoever back to the franchise, you know what I'm saying? We'll have an opportunity to say, hey, it's already trying to keep just like a McDonald's or a Wendy's or right. Wingstop or whatever it might be. So we definitely want to do that in two years. As okay. far as radio, man, I just enjoy the ride because you just never know opportunity. Like I had no idea that I'd be on ESPN. So with entertainment, at right. least for my ride, right. is that when the door opens, you just go through it if it makes sense for you and the other party. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's giving you that, that chance. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. shoot, you know, I, just just having Radio 1, having ESPN in there, and, you know, just being, you know, on that, that's, that's just crazy. So, if, you know, you want a full-time show and I can fit in my schedule, and, yeah, that would be dope. You know what I'm right. saying? For me to earn it, get to that point. Right. You earn it when the opportunity comes, so you can't be nervous. I mean, I was nervous my first day, so I can say nervous, but you can't be like, ah, well, ah, well. Right. It's like a rapper. Like, you mean he freestyle. You can't be like, man, hold on, show let me go. No, you got to go ahead and kick it. So you got to go ahead and jump on the boards and you mess up, you go, you just keep going. You know what I'm saying? You see people on TV all the time mess up, so right. they just keep it flowing. You know what I mean? Uh, there you go. But yeah, man, just as far as the most thing that's the most important is pretty much this uh, this Burger Bros becoming the franchise, hopefully, okay. having things down, packed and move in two years and as far as, you know, Swerve Nation Radio, you know, keeping that going with mixes, you know, we record our mixes live in the club, so that's that new technology, so it can be so crisp, it can have that CD crisp right. sound, so when you get it out to your people, your fans and your listeners, you know, they definitely can enjoy that. Continue right. to expose an independent artist, we got some great interviews that'll be coming up soon, we've just been so focused with the burger spot, but, okay. you know, with Sean G and, uh, and M being very instrumental with that, uh, kind of creating this whole um, affiliation and, and, and network or what is, I forgot the word he used with my homie Mercy with the Fear No Snakes. Okay. Um, we definitely want to try to create this whole affiliation thing that we're going to be using. So, okay. Uh, to do business. And we got an event coming up in September, I think the 26th is going to be like a fashion show, kind of like in a, it's going to be a nice joint, you know what I mean? So, okay. Yeah, man, I'm all, like I said, just always trying to keep, keep the doors open for the next great opportunity, man. So I really don't put no time on it. But I know I would say, at about, I mean, everybody want to retire when they're sitting at 65, living in 95 or whatever. Right. Um, but, I mean, shucks, if I can get 10 million. There you go. You know what I'm saying? I can really coast and do what I want to do or give somebody else the opportunity to maybe work for my TV station. You know what I mean? Exactly. Look at Diddy. Diddy got Revolt TV, so. There you go. You know, he swear TV. You know, he's an inspiration, too, so, you know. There you go, man. That's it that's is. what it's all about for our community, man. Thank him big, bro. That's 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 what you've been doing from the beginning, man. So yeah, man, that's that's good to go. Shoot for the star. What advice could you give a young person, man, that's looking to get into the DJ game? What what advice would you tell them, man? I forgot the name of that movie when uh I think it was uh Ben Stiller when he had it, like the gray hair with the glasses. He was like, <laughs> do it, do it. Okay, do it. Just do it. If you like okay. music, if you love music, music is your passion. Right. Go ahead. Just get into this. This. Just go ahead. And get you some turntables because you can't learn how to ride a bike without a bike. So you can't, you know, learn how to DJ without no equipment, man. Just, you know, start listening to DJs, asking DJs questions. Maybe somebody become your mentor, depending on your age. You know, what I'm saying how much time you're able to put into it. But you definitely want to make sure you got some time to get your craft together. Right. Then get you some connections so you can get you some records. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, having the music to play is definitely a challenge. So. Right. You know. There's some ways you can get your music. You just got to network, join some record pools. You know, as your name grows, you get music from the record labels. That's that's like an honor to do that. Right. Record reps. So shout out to all the record reps. Through my whole career, so many of them were just nice. You know, even when I wasn't supposed to be getting them, they were like, here you go, man. I know you ain't on commercial radio, but, you know, my college days. So right. network, man, you just never know what's going to come your way. But right. go ahead and just get your music up, get your equipment up, be ready to invest. Right. Because uh, you get what you pay for. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Use a MacBook too. Don't be. Uh, <laughs> please don't use a PC. Use a MacBook when you DJ. You can't you go to PC, man. <laughs> MacBooks the way to go. I ain't even getting no money from the, from them, but right. you know, they just they just for video editing and audio and all that, man. I just say, don't even waste your time on getting nothing else. Just go ahead and get you a MacBook to complement. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your DJ set. You know, you know, internal external equipment. Right. As far as how you gonna store your music? You know. Two terabytes, one terabyte, whatever you right. need. 
I wouldn't go lower than that. Um, and just have fun with it. That's good, bro. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I know we kind of skipped past this, but I, I got to go back to this. What made you specifically go into being and wanting to become a DJ? I've I seen evidence or pictures when I was a little baby. It was the first one I seen was like, I guess they were just looking at me having fun, but I was on the ground holding the bottle like this. I was like, I've always been a little party here since back in the day. Of course it was closed when he right. unwrapped. But I was like, and just listening to music and hearing my mom and dad always playing music around. Right. Just around me in general. And the first time I even bought in a, a rap tape, she was like, oh, what's all? Oh, you don't even listen to the You don't right. listen to the rap yet. <laughs> my stepbrother got me a hook. You know what I'm saying? I heard that NWA, that 100 Miles of Running. That's right. Like, yeah, that's it. I do some of this music. So, you know, it's always basketball. Uh, of course, working with the kids because of that. But basketball, ping pong, uh, and boxing. That's what right. I really want to do. And music was just like my little thing. You know what I mean? Recording songs on the radio. Right. Stuff like that. So, um, good cut from basketball and not being able to be able to do box. Um, right. And, of course, ping pong. I ain't never seen nobody make a, a living, living, living <laughs> off of it. But be on the Olympics and all that. Right. So, I was like, well, let me just go ahead and, you know, rock with this music. And it was kind of torture. I said, man, she's a DJ, bro. Right. And I just playing music at the Boys and Girls Club doing their games. I figured out a side of the headphone that could be the mic. <laughs> and my joints on the tapes. I had a CD. It was like a three-disc CD changer with a with a dual deck joint, man. And I actually used that to DJ my first party for 150 at the Bird Park Roundhouse. I'll never forget it. Man. It was wow. crazy. Like, he picked me up when they had a whip, of course, at that age. Um, my people didn't have one either. So it was just like, yo, man, this could be it. I just would DJ all the parties for our Keystone Club to raise money. We had a little... Okay. Any little party nights or whatever, I was 50 cents to get in, 25 for the re entry, 25 right. for the Kool Aid, 50, 25, 50 cents for a couple Kool Aid, 25 for the refill. And Come we would on. do those joints so much. <laughs> you know, when I got the cop, when I got, when I turned 18 is when I was able to get, you know, at least some turntables and stuff like that. Cause I just, you know, get it all on my own. Right, right, right. So I'm messing up with my mom and them turntables and all that in the living room. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. But yeah, you know, just, uh, yeah, man, it's it's, a, it's been a lot, man. It's so much more we can say, but oh yeah, oh, I yeah. give you that right there. I give you that right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah bro. Well, I appreciate you cutting out some time out of your busy life, man. I know you got a lot of stuff going on, man. Just wanted to give the people, man, a uh, a, a, a view of you, bro. I don't know if it's an interview out there, a swerve, um, but I said, look, we not, need, not need to, huh? <laughs> No, never like this, bro. Honestly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think so, but I said, hey, I don't want to, you know, assume anything, but I needed to to do this, man. You're my brother, bro. So had to get you out there, man. You are, you're a legend in the city in Richmond, VA, the cap city. So this needed to be done. Yeah, cap. Needed to be done. You made history, yeah. man, a positive impact in the city and everything, man. So appreciate everything that you've done, man. And Praying blessings to you, man, for everything at ESPN, your restaurant, everything that you're doing, man. So just keep us posted, man. Let us know your your social media outlets, man, where the people can reach out, out to you, man, and everything so they can keep in touch. Yeah, well, first I just want to say thank you too, bro, you know what I'm saying, just for the brotherhood and for this interview. And I'm kind of glad you're the first person to kind of get this <laughs> comprehensive. And even though the chapters can open up deeper, but at least they get a, you know, a summary page from different chapters. So I appreciate you, you know, you know what I'm saying? We're getting this thing, you know, up for the world to see. There you go. Um, but you can follow me, you know, pretty much on all social media at DJ Swear De Nero. Follow the new bar at Burger Bros RVA. Um, of course, you know, we got that Swerve Nation Facebook page, so follow us on that. Um, at Swerve Nation Radio too, as well on Instagram and on Twitter. Yeah. And like I said, that's a platform for music and sports as far as Swerve Nation Radio. Swerve TV is about to give you the mixes, our live club experiences, live event experiences. And just exposing other people too. So we got this one situation coming up that I can't wait for. Uh, I was like, "Yo, man, this man does stuff with like um, figurines. Like he might take all the Marvel comic mini figurines and make a scene. Okay, and take pictures with it. So I'm like, wow, I like stuff like that. I want to okay. expose that. Everybody, you know, can show certain stuff. But you find interviews like that. It's like, wow, you know, what I mean, yeah. you got a one million tennis shoes in your house. Let me see that. Right, right, right. And this is not weird, different, yeah. but still interesting at the same time. So. Right, 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 right. So thank you, bro. Appreciate it, man. No problem, man. Anytime, anytime, man. Well, you never know. We might do another one of these, man. Go a different way, do a different subject. 
still within your your DJ career, man, and what you've been doing, but do some other subjects and stuff, man. So yeah, I'm gonna hold, hold you to that. I might have to get you to do a live joint in, in Burger Bros. And we also got Gatsby's too, my partners. Okay, so that's a sports bar, so we're gonna have some opportunity to do that. So maybe you can do a live version of your show in Burger Bros. or something. You know what I'm saying? That's saying like a plan, yeah, bro. That's saying like a plan. So, all right, everybody. Appreciate my man, Swerve the Narrow, DJ Swerve the Narrow, Swerve Nation, we, representing we, Swerve we. TV. It's going to be Swerve everything before you know it. <laughs> Swerve Towers. <laughs> the we in the dirty. Oh, that right, came out clear. I didn't want to harass me. There you go. There you go, bro. All right, everybody. Y'all be safe out there. Stay safe. Do your, do your thing, man. You know, if all of us um, do our thing, be positive, man, you know, the world will become better. So if one of us is hurting, all of us is hurting. So treat everybody right, man. Say a peace to everybody out there. I swear, thank you again. All right, bro. Peace.